Now, earlier in these videos, we took a look at some of the powerful methods that we could have with our lists. Do you remember this? Yeah, we learned about the insert method. We learned about the append method. Well, there's plenty of other list methods that you can utilize, and let's just pause for a minute and make sure we understand that and where we could look them up. So I'm going to go ahead and fire open Google, and I am going to indicate that I want to do a search at only python.org, and I want to search for list methods. Yeah, this is a great way to do a search uh, of a specific website, and oftentimes it's gonna be more efficient than maybe a non-Google search mechanism that the website has. But anyways, yeah, don't forget this trick. It can really help you out at times. And look at that, it did great for us. It brings us right into the data structures area of the documentation, and look at this, it brings us right to these additional methods. So notice, here is the insert method and its documentation that we saw before. There's the append method. Whoops, I just hid the uh, table of contents there, no big deal. So there's the append method. Notice there's an extend. Extend the list by appending all the items from the iterable that we provide. So there's remove. Remove the first item from the list whose value is equal to x. There's pop, which is to remove an item from a specific position. So if you don't give a specific position, it'll take the last item from the list. Yeah, it pops off that last item. How about getting rid of everything? Clear. There's a count to count up how many times a certain value appears. There's a reverse, there's a copy, you get the idea. So lots of methods with your lists, and this is how we could easily consult the documentation on these various methods. Now let me show you something else uh, that I want you to be aware of when it comes to methods in Python. We can actually have them appear inside of idle. Yeah, watch this. Very handy. So I'll do the classic my list here to create a sample list, and I'll put a bunch of stuff in it like we like to do. And then uh, let's say I want to manipulate this and I can't remember all of those various methods. What I can do is say my list and then put in my period and hit the shift button on the keyboard in Windows. Yeah, so it would be shift in Windows. I think it's shift two on the Mac. But anyways, notice you hit the right key and it brings up the list of possible methods. Yeah, so one of them we saw was count. And if you remember, all we have to do with count is put a value uh, in there that we want to count. Let's do the value of 10. So there we go, my list count 10 and I'm thinking it should respond with two. Yeah, the number of occurrences of the integer 10 in our list. So these methods are very, very powerful, and you now know uh, how to get more information on them. I'd like to wrap up this video with just a little word on the difference between methods and functions. Yeah, that'll kind of drive students crazy sometimes, I notice. They're very, very similar, aren't they? Like, here's an example of a function. I'm going to print my list. And the deal with a function is it's available to an entire Python program. But notice a method is private to that object that it is working on. Yeah, so we are doing something against my list specifically. Yeah, that's what a method is all about. And we'll have lots more to say on this later on when we stop, start talking about uh, object-oriented nature of Python and things of that nature. But just wanted to once again kind of make that clear. Yeah, those methods do look a lot like functions. It's just they're very different from functions in that they are private to that object 
that they are directly associated with. Well, all right, everyone, we've got, believe it or not, we've got lots more fun to have with these lists in Python. I hope you'll join me for the upcoming videos.